Hey everybody, uh, it's been a little, little while. I've uh, been really busy redoing the house. Just got done redoing the bedroom and bathroom and moving moving someone in. Someone's moving out, so it's been kind of hectic around here. And uh, got out of work early because of the snow in Michigan, so I got some free time and I've been trying to get this done. I've had it set up for about a week. I've just been trying to get time to get down here and show you how to do it um, it's gonna be on the Teko Kage and I'm gonna do this without welding uh, it's all gonna be done with rivets and I'll give you a little demo on rivets and then I'll actually show you how to do it on the actual Teko Kage uh, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some steel quarter inch by one inch. Um, I'm using quarter inch by three quarter because that's all I have. Then you're going to need some quarter inch by half inch. That's what I got right here. That's what's going to be for the actual claws. Now the one that I'm doing is only going to have two claws because that's all the steel I have right now. I still don't have a chance to get some more but I think doing one with two claws will look kind of cool. I've done one with three, I've done one with, you know, four, so I figure I'll do some, something a little different. Um, the next, you're going to need nails or rivets. Now, I, I got my rivets from McMaster Car, and as you can see, the rivets, they're about 180 thou uh, diameter, the actual rivet. Grab one of these. These are the same ones I used on my uh, Tetsubo. I got a bunch of these left over. Uh, the head is 300 thou. And don't mind that. That was something I was trying to figure out, but don't need be. If you're using nails, which is totally okay to use, these nails are about 165 thou round and you can use these as rivets too I think these are like three inch long nails um, you're gonna need a drill for the holes for the rivets a hammer and a rivet set I'm not using that you don't need to use it rivet set comes with the little snap rivets you can use it if you want but it's not needed I just I'm just using a hammer that works just as well uh, you're gonna need some heat either an ex, uh, oxy acetylene torch which I got that right there which I just had to go run to Home Depot because I ran out of oxygen or you can use propane uh, for this I would definitely use the oxy acetylene it heats it up a lot faster um, it's a lot better heat you can use propane, it's just going to take a little bit longer to heat up the rivet or the nail and then to heat up the other parts of the steel, you know, to bend it. Uh, and you're going to need a square just to make sure everything's straight. Now, up here I have old Shuko. Now if you have a pair of the store bought ones, you can use that instead of this piece because this is going to be for the part that wraps around your hand that you grab onto. So if you have an old set of those and you want to junk them, you know this will this will work just as good. So to start off, we'll go over a little bit about these rivets. I got a piece of scrap steel here that I've drilled holes through. And you can see this one right here, this was actually a nail. that I heated up and pounded through. Here's one of the rivets with the ball end on this side. Cut it about an eighth inch to three sixteenths longer than your piece so you have material to mushroom over. And all I did is I drilled a hole just a tiny bit bigger than the nail. Pop that in there. And let me set this aside for now. 
and I'll show you real quick how you can do this. Uh, it does work better if you have two people doing this. One person holding your torch or your heat. I'm gonna use some. Uh, I'm gonna use the propane just for the fact that I gotta finish up the actual piece. I don't want to waste any of my oxygen. So we'll get this turned on. And you just want to heat the rivet until it glows red. Like I said, with propane, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. That's why it's better to have two people do this. One person holding the heat, one person holding the hammer, and the piece ready to start smacking it. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell if this is getting hot or not through the camera. But we'll see. Like I said, it does take a lot longer with propane. Usually you have to do it twice, once to kind of mushroom it over, and the second time is kind of to finish it off. So we'll heat this up again. So that's a nail. Normally I would put the nice finished side, the actual head of the nail, that'll be the side that you actually see. The ugly side, that'll be inside kind of hidden. But you can see it riveted over very nicely. Not as easy as with you know the other torches, but it does work. So that's how we're gonna attach everything. Now just for put this in some water. Just for time's sake, I did do half of the Takokage. Just for time purposes. And I'll explain all this. Uh, you're gonna need one piece in the back. That's gonna go on your forearm with whatever hole spacing you want for however many hooks uh, claws you have. Like I said, I'm doing two, so I have these spread apart about an inch and a half. Uh, I got a six inch spread from here to the handle. So I did the same thing up here. Drilled my, got all my holes drilled. And I have a nice long claw that is gonna eventually gonna be curved over. This piece right here is what would replace if you don't, if you uh, don't have a old shuko, because this will actually be bending over into a hand form with my where is it at? With my homemade jig for bending hand pieces around. I don't know if I'm going to have enough oxygen to do that. I just bought a brand new tank, so hopefully I do. If not. That part will actually, you won't see that part. That, I don't know how well it's going to do because it's pretty cold down here. The steel is cooling off really quickly. So, what we're going to do, I got my other piece already. So, I'm going to take one of my rivets. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put it on the right side because the first time I did this I didn't put it on the right side and I had to pound the rivet back out, which is not fun.
These holes are a little bit smaller. Just for the fact that I don't have a drill the exact size. And as you can see, I gotta take my, uh, some of the steel is starting to curl up because it's a smaller hole. So I'm just gonna get a little pick and pry some of that out of there. So that's through one side. I'm going to take another rivet. And I forgot to chamfer this one. All I was doing was putting a chamfer on the end of this to make it go into the hole easier. I forgot to do it on this one. Clean off some of that rolled up steel. If I can get it out of there. Finish pounding it all the way in. So then I got my two rivets on top. So next, I'm going to punch these through into these holes. Hopefully this all lines up. That would be nice. This is where a square really comes in handy. Because if you don't have everything square, these holes aren't going to line up. Looks like I got it. Okay. So I got these set inside. Let's see if I can get a better view of this. So now I'm, I'm gonna have to heat those up and peen those over. So we'll do that right now. See now I don't have anyone to help me. I have to put my torch in a in a vise. Let's start this up. Better view of this. There we go. Be able to see the torch a little bit. Sorry about my arms being in the way. my torch going, I'm going to heat up one of these and pound it home.
making sure everything is sitting flat. This is also why it's better to have someone hold the heat because you don't have to actually take it off it when you're hammering it. I have to make sure that it's really glowing just for the fact that I have to take it away and set it down and I lose a lot of the heat that's in the rivet. Hit this other one a little bit more than I did before. Turn off my heat now. So now I have it's riveted there, riveted down there. Now I wouldn't quench this at all, I would let it cool. Just for the fact of the stress of the steel, you might cause the rivets to to shrink a little bit and become a little loose. I just let it cool naturally. So we're we're almost there. So let me take my torch off here. And I'm gonna see if I can We can bend this. Put my jig inside there. I need a C clamp. How much time do I got left? Ooh, I don't got a lot of time left. We'll see if I can get any of this done. If not, I'll stop and just explain the rest of it. Make sure this is centered in there. Centered and level. And that looks good. So I'm just gonna, damn it, really tighten this down. So I don't got I don't got enough time left to actually do this. This camera has no time on it at all. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be heating up all this area right here, and then slowly bending this around 
till it reaches about the center. Do the same over here, heat this up, bend this around until they meet, and then take a hacksaw, or I'll take my cutoff tool, and I'll actually cut them, and then finish pounding them in until they meet. Uh, they don't need to be welded, so don't, don't think you need to do that. As long as they meet up nicely, you're good to go. And then after that, I have to put a little hook on these. Um, I'm going to try and do a short video probably tomorrow on uh, fixtures and jigs that I have for making a lot of this stuff. Just to give people an idea if they want to make their own fixtures like this, how I made this, and a couple other things. I mean, just this one piece, I've made dozens and dozens of hand, hand pieces from Shuko to Tekokage, different types of uh, Tekken. You know, it's, this piece has been really important. The uh, light kind of sucks, so you can't really see it. But, and then tomorrow I'll show you the finished piece of this. Maybe I'll upload this and try and finish that up. We'll see. So that's really about it. Uh, the length of everything is really, that's all your preference. I mean, there is no specific number. I've made them to where they just come that far off your hand, and these are going to be coming, you know, almost 10, 11 inches off my hand. Uh, spacing is all to what fits on your hand. I mean, what fits on my hand might not fit on someone who's got bigger hands or smaller hands. So it's all custom to you. So what I'm constantly doing is I'm constantly taking my hand and taking a, a small little ruler and kind of looking at it going uh let's see where would they where would they fit nicely okay you know my hands about knuckles are about three inches so if i put one in the center that's an inch and a half then i'll space one off you know maybe an inch off to this side an inch off to that side you know that works good for me so that's pretty much it uh, if you have any questions on where to get some of this stuff you know, let me know. A lot of this stuff can be found at Home Depot. Uh, you don't need rivets. Like I said, you can use nails. They actually work just as good. Uh, I'm just using rivets because I have them on hand. And that's about it. Uh, sorry it's so short and abrupt and you didn't get to see a whole lot. I got a lot of time constraints, so hopefully you'll see the finished product in the next video. So, we'll see.